Hi guys, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or whichever time zone you're joining us from. Welcome to our webinar on what more can IM do for your API management platform. Uh, we're very excited to be presenting this and we're uh, you know, glad that all of you joined us for uh, this webinar. Just want to quickly introduce everyone that will be presenting today. So my name is Ishara. Uh, I'm the product marketing manager for WC2 Identity Server. Um, unfortunately, Ishara, who is the director of uh, engineering of IAM at WS2, is unable to join due to an emergency that was quite unavoidable. But nevertheless, um, Tanuja, who is my teammate and technical lead um, of the WS2 uh, IAM team, will be um, taking on most of the presentation, and I'll be uh, with him taking you through this very interesting topic today. So before we get started, um, I just want to give you a little bit of context as to why we, uh, you know, wanted to do this series. We see this with the exploding endpoints as a need to secure APIs. So we thought, you know, we'll start this webinar series talking about API security and then talk to you about securing APIs using WS2 Identity Server. You know, basically how Identity Server enhances um, APIs, uh, API security. And then on today's webinar, we want to kind of go beyond that path, you know, not just talk about API security, but adding a total or holistic IAM solution like WSO2 Identity Server can do a lot for you. So that's kind of what we want to take you through uh, during today's webinar. So just a little bit of introduction about WSO2. If this is the first time uh, you know, you're attending a webinar, uh, we have three products in our platform. That's the WSO2 API Manager, uh, WSO2 Enterprise Integrator, and the one that we will take a lot of the focus on today will be WSO2 uh, Identity Service, a highly extensible uh, identity solution that is uh, developer friendly. And at this point, our largest customer handles over 106 million identities. Um, so it's a scalable product uh, that's quite flexible and that can do a lot for your organization, especially if you have digital transformation projects to improve your users' experience. A little bit of good news for um, WSO2 Identity Server as well, if you haven't heard, we got this recognition uh, from this recent forest wave in that customer IAM report. We have been placed as a strong performer and we're quite excited about that, um, given that you know the possible, with the, with the highest scores that we got um, for WSO2 Identity Server, including authentication, customer self-service, business integration, reporting and dashboarding, um, and also for privacy and consent management. Uh, those are some of the categories that we scored really high and it will also be some of the um, uh, sections and features that we are planning to cover um, in today's webinar. So uh, to take us through it, uh, we, let's talk a little bit about API security in the current context and what is it that you need to look at to go beyond your API security strategy. Uh, I would like to hand over the controls to my very capable colleague, uh, Tanuja. Tanuja, over to you. Yeah, hello. Thanks, Vishara. Uh, well, hello, everyone. So I'm Tamuji Jaising and I will be talking about the essential IAM capabilities required for API platforms. Let's have a look at the current API security status in 2020. Year 2020 started like a normal year, but when we hit March, we knew this is not going to be a normal at all. With COVID-19 pandemic situation, Many governments shut down their countries to stop the spread of the virus. And even today, many countries are still in the shutdown state. So what does this mean for business? Their employees started to work remotely and more and more customers shifted to use the digital platforms to get their things done. So now we are in a situation where we need to expose many private services securely to their employees who are working remotely and need new solution to continue the business. During this crisis, one party actually thrived, the attackers. They have been using this confused and volatile state to their advantage. Businesses lost 8.4 billion record during only 
the first quarter of this year. This is 273% increase compared to the year 2019 Q1. And more importantly, 70% of them are due to unauthorized access to systems and services. So even though we are in a rush, we have to make sure there are no weak links in our digital solution. Let's take a typical API platform. You have a key manager, gateway, backend services. Key manager is responsible for authentication and authorization of end users and application. Then the gateway sits between clients and the backend services, providing different services like enforcing authorization, throttling, etc. Even though current focus is around API security, we can't stop from there. We need to consider the full solution. So there are many IAM capabilities required to build a secure API platform. So let's see, what are the essential IAM capabilities required for API platform? Extended access delegation. This is quite interesting. So the, the OAuth 2.0 course specification defines five main RAM types. Uh, you may already know authorization code, implicit resource owner password to uh, password grant, uh, then the client credential and the refresh grant. But not all systems are based on OAuth 2.0. So OAuth 2 allows defining new extension grant types to support additional clients so to provide bridge between OAuth and other trust frameworks. So, one of the key specifications written to cater that requirement is OAuth Assertion Framework, which provides a common framework for OAuth to, to interwork with other systems using assertion and to provide alternative client authentication mechanism. SAML2 bear assertion grant and JW2 bear assertion grant are written based on the assertion framework specification. In SAML2 bear grant, if you already log into an application with SAML2 protocol, uh, you can exchange the SAML2 assertion for an O2 access token in order to access both protected APIs with the need, without the need of re-authentication. Similarly, in JWT, we can JWT grant, we can exchange a JWT security token to an O2 access token. Then we have the token exchange grant. This enable access to another owner's resources through the impersonation and de delegation. Think of a scenario as an admin, you want to do some action on behalf of another regular user. Or you have an associated sub-accounts and you want this sub-accounts to do some action on behalf of the main account. In such cases, you can make the use of this graph. Next, the device code graph. This extension enables devices with no browser or limited input capability to obtain an access token. This is commonly seen on smart TVs like uh, Apple TV and uh, many, many uh, media consoles and many smart devices. With this user can review the authorization details on a secondary device such as a smartphone which does not require in it does have the required input and browser capabilities to complete the user interaction. Uh, then we have the Fabros graph type. Uh, if you are in a Windows environment, you can use the same Windows login and get an OAuth access token uh, using Fabros token. Uh, this will help to provide the seamless integration for Windows users. If it is a basic API management platform, basic authorization grant can uh, cater the access delegation. But uh, when we integrate the IAM solution with the API platform, 
it will enable advanced access delegation support which will be essential for enterprise solution also one of the primary features that come with IBM solution is open id connect or OIDC, which is a, which is an identity layer on top of or 2.0 so this can be used by the application to authenticate users for their applications uh, the end user identity management so this is a, like a quite important topic uh, uh, in an enterprise solution there are apis that go beyond organization boundaries and they consume by and those APIs are consumed by people, devices, or other services. Based on, on the type of identity, we need to control how they access the APIs and what they can access. Also, this identity can be stored in heterogeneous user stores and could be storing millions of identities. Also, in some cases, uh, attributes belong to the same identity can be available in multiple user stores and credential stores. Also, this uh, platform needs to support uh, recovery features like uh, username or password recovery. And there, and it is essential to provide safe services, need to safe services, and it need, it need to be there for user to update profile, manage their consented application or devices. And most importantly, you have, uh, there should be option to delete their profiles. So like uh, bringing IAM solution can uh, effectively manage this complexity with the identity management. Uh, in the initial state of an API platform, you may not come across all these complexities, uh, but having the right IAM, IAM system from the inception can ensure your platform is ready for huge changes. Uh, then the strong and adaptive authentication. Uh, uh, in the API security context, we often focus on how to authorize or delegate access to resources. Uh, we talk about scopes, token, validity period, and whether the refresh token is allowed. Uh, those are the like. Um, main points we heavily consider in this context. Uh, but security of this flow start with authentication. If you are not paying more attention to the authentication, the rest of the system will, be, will become secure as how much secure is your authentication mechanism. Uh, basic or password based authentication is considered as a less secure mechanism as it, as it is often can be broken to using different attacks. As a solution, uh, they have introduced the multi-factor authentication or MFA. Uh, and the MFA concept is based on the assumption that if one factor is compromised or broken, an attacker still have, has at least one more one or one more, more barriers to breach before successfully breaking into the target. Uh, therefore, it's more secure. Uh, MFA relies on two or more independent credentials on the following category. Uh, knowledge factors like uh, things you only the user knows, such as password, pin numbers. Uh, then the possession factors, uh, things only user has, such as ATM card or mobile phone. Then the inherence factors, things only the uh, only the user is, such as fingerprint, uh, retina scan, those kind of things. So, well, like uh, even though MFA allows greater security, it hinders the usability. In simple terms, you can have authentication factors as much as, much as you want to make the security super tight. But consumers will hate the authentication experience. Because of this, adaptive authentication images. Uh, it is same as multi-factor authentication or MFA, but instead of having a static flow, uh, based on the context, factors will be added or removed intelligently. Uh, the best part is most of the times, users will understand why they need to go through the additional steps. 
Okay. Uh, cross protocol, single sign out and sign out. In a complete digital transformation project, there can be multiple applications serving different purposes and audiences. So it is essential to have a single sign on mechanism to ensure customers will have the consistent login experience with common credential upon different digital entities. Uh, a few authorization server servers may support OIDC based single sign on, even though modern application support OIDC based federation, there is a considerable portion which use SAML or WSU. WS Federation. Uh, in most digital transformation projects, we can see different protocols being used in this application. Therefore, you have to pick an IAM solution that support all of these federation protocols. The solutions should especially support cross protocol single sign on along with sign on. If a Platform contains legacy application that use uh, proprietary protocols for federation. Then your IAM solution should have the capability to extend its federation authentication support for these uh, non-standardized protocol as well. Uh, then the identity federation and social login. When you consider Google, Facebook, or Twitter, they have this huge developer community and ecosystem built around their APIs. One indicator to identify the success of an API platform is how well established is their developer community. So bringing developers to, the, to your API platform is essential and allowing them to use their Git account to authenticate to the system will reduce the friction in getting on board and trying out your APIs. Uh, also, like uh, social logins is essential for consumer applications. Uh, most of the users will use social login options instead of registering them to the application. So having an IEM solution uh, will be essential to enable social login options to your platform. Additionally, like uh, there can be situation where you need to provide access to some APIs for users in different business units. If you can use identity federation, uh, those users will be able to access those APIs without a hassle. Also, when the organization grows, it may acquire or merge existing businesses. Then uh, access. Uh, then, then to access shared risk services, uh, identity federation will be less complex option and user experience will be consistent. Then the like enforce, uh, enforce authorization. Uh, in a system, authorization means uh, whether that verified identity can perform the given action on a protected resource. The auth, auth to scope parameter is the best choice to enforce resource level authorization. Uh, usually scope validation happens at two stages. Uh, in the authentication request flow, before granting the access, the scope need to be validated and checked uh, if authenticated users are eligible to uh, run the requested scopes or not. Uh, then when it comes to the API invocation, there should be another validation, uh, usually in the API gateway to check whether the API resource is accessible with the uh, granted token scope. Even though scope seems to be perfect for most authorization requirements, this, this mechanism is only sufficient to implement static scenarios and cause great authorization requests such as give me read access to the resource owner's profile. But it is not sufficient to specify fine grain authorization requirements such as, like, uh, please uh, let me make a payment with the amount of $50 or 
please give me read access to folder A and write access to file X. Then you have to go with SACML or Open Policy Agent or OPA to handle these kind of fine grain authorization requirements. Also, the draft specification, the, this rich authorization request, try to provide additional information to the authorization via uh, authorization details parameter and provide the fine grain authorization capabilities to both. Uh, another issue with the scope based solution is the application or client will include every scope the client might ever need it in the authorization secret and it can result in over scoped authorization and uh, uh, suboptimal end user consent experience uh, incremental authorization draft specification uh, is is tried to solve this problem by providing capability to request specific authorization scope as needed and when they are needed Removing the requirement to request every possible scope that might need needed upfront. These fine grain capabilities are part of the IAM solution and can be incorporated into the API platform uh, very easily. Uh, like uh, many parties currently forcing enterprise to take actions to protect the privacy data about the individual, namely uh, data protection legislation like EU. Uh, sorry, uh, namely data uh, protection legislation like uh, EU general data protection regulations so or GDPR or uh, California Consumer Private Data. Act or CCPA. Uh, also, recent attacks and data breach situation like the Facebook, Cambridge Analytica data scandal, uh, forcing enterprises to take more action on data privacy. Uh, there are a lot more data stored uh, about consumers in the enterprise data store, additionally to the user profile. Uh, as an example, uh, there can be search history. Uh, preferences and if it is a medical service, there will be medical history. And if it, if it is a, like a site like Amazon, there will be purchase history. And like uh, they may be tracking the behaviors, like uh, if you buy this, you are also going to buy that, like that. So then, the, like uh, uh, you have many IoT devices in your home, so they may be tracking from them, like. So, like, uh, there are a lot of data uh, available on the enterprise data stores uh, about you. So, uh, these data can be stored across your enterprise in different locations. So, it, it can be anywhere. So, and these data will be accessed by your employees and your, uh, like, uh, so these uh, data accessed by your employees and the partners. Uh, who are uh, who are around the globe? So the like uh, the problem becomes more and more complex to handle by your APM solution. Uh, so it is essential to multinational uh, organization to must worry about their uh, privacy regulation of each and every country they do business in, and use an IAM solution sophisticated enough to ensure. Um, adherence to the international privacy uh, and data retention regulation when they build their API management platform or digital transformation journey. Okay. Okay. okay, let's recap. So, the like uh, we first talk about ex extended access delegation, where we talk about how both these uh, can be extended to provide uh, support for uh, different, uh, like uh, authenticate with uh, different trust framework. And then we talk about end user identity management. And we, in there, uh, we 
talk how, how the identity management is important for the APRM management platform. Uh, then we talk about strong and adaptive authentication and uh, what you need to do for protect your APIs, uh, starting from the authentication level. Uh, then uh, we talk about cross protocol single sign on and sign out and why you need that like uh, because like there yeah, can be like uh, an existing system you need to uh, bring into the picture and uh, uh, like uh, uh, they may also want to uh, access your apis and everything so uh, uh, we talk about that uh, then the identity federation and social login and like uh, we talked about like uh, how it is essential to like uh, uh, build your developer community and uh, and um, make it easy for them to uh, come to your uh, uh, like uh, make it them easy to come to come and log into a site and try out things and uh, next we talk about enforce authorization and there we talk about like uh, how the uh, fine grain authorization or the uh, coarse grain authorization uh, uh, like based on your requirement and the, like uh, finally we talked about uh, privacy management and like uh, things we need to do to, to protect the uh, privacy data okay uh, it's the question time so yeah, if you've got uh, questions, you can share those with us right now and uh, we can um, take them on. And at the same time, I think uh, one of the questions we've already got is um, actually before we get to that, um, you can we, we will be sending uh, the recording of this webinar. So if that is a question that you wanted to ask, I thought I could uh, cover it for you right here that we will be sharing that. Um, and also, since you attended the webinar, you will also be getting a copy of Advanced API Security uh, authored by Prabhat Sirivazan. I just wanted to give you a reminder since you, you know, made the choice to attend the live webinar. Um, yeah, keep those uh, questions and answers coming. And we have a question on asking how they can navigate for the previous webinars um, that we hosted on this webinar series. So as you guys know, we hosted a webinar on uh, API security best practices um, that and following up with uh, securing APIs with wc 2 i 3 server. Um, those you can simply go to wso2.com, look for learn and you will find uh, an option for webinars and you can find all of the previous recordings there. Uh, just going through some of the questions we've got. Tanuj, we have one question that is um, it's asking, um, currently using key manager, at which point do I decide to go for a full I am solution. Like basically, I think basically the person is wondering at which point would you know that they should be switching from key manager to a full time solution? Do you have an answer for that? Yeah, basically, like uh, uh, it's depend on the context. But like uh, what I'm thinking is like uh, so. Uh, uh, I think like uh, in my experience, starting from the beginning and like uh, you are. Uh, if you have the IAM solution in your uh, in your platform, then mm -hmm. the, like uh, everything going to be pretty much smoother in the future. So yeah. like uh, wait for the like last minute to have like another IAM capabilities or something like that. Like so, bringing something later will like uh, hurt you more than like <laughs> I mean like so better to have it in the like. Uh, first place and like uh, from the beginning itself yeah no that, that, that's actually very good advice yeah um uh, okay we have a, another one what are the social identity providers that identity server supports out of the box yeah like uh, so actually i server support many of the so like uh, available social identity providers so like uh uh, if you go to the iron server connector pages there you have the like list like more than 50 connectors there like uh, in, in there you can find the like supported all the supported 
uh, social identity providers. So uh, like basically Google, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, all those things are like all those major things and like uh, many other things are all uh, supported from the like uh, you can just download it and like uh, you can place it in the user and you can uh, make them work. Yeah. Okay. Um, so another one. Oh, the, actually, there are about a couple of questions around this same thing, and I think it's one of the important points that you also raised before. Tanu just saying that it's always good to have an IM solution from you know the start itself because there are things like privacy, uh, you you know that we definitely need to pay attention to. So one of the question there are about two questions on this. One question is is WSO2 IT server GDPR compliant? Uh, yes, it is. Like uh, so, you can use actually the like uh, the features available in the IT server to build the uh, GDPR compliant solution. So, uh, yeah, like we have the like uh, uh, all the consent related and privacy related features. So, like uh, you can use them and like uh, uh, like uh, use them and build your own. Uh, GDPR compact solution. So basically, like uh, maybe we, later we can send you the like links to uh, for this uh, like uh, for this thing. Like uh, so, how how like our samples and solutions. Like uh, so, you can go through them and understand more about the like uh, how WC2 providing this uh, GDPR compact. Okay. Uh, on that same topic, Tanuja, there's a question on, can you explain about um, the consent management capabilities provided by WS2 identity server? Would you like to elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah, like, uh, so the consent management is like a, like a major part in the, like, uh, in this, uh, like in the, in the compliance thing. Like, uh, so uh, if you, uh, like start with the like uh, like uh, like uh, what is what the consent mean is like uh, so uh, usually you have guys have seen the like in O2 uh, uh, you are requesting some scopes like uh, so yeah. what happened is in there like uh, uh, you like maybe asking for like some uh, let's say uh, some scope and like some attributes are related to that one and the, like in the consent page. Uh, you go there and like uh, there what you do is like uh, you can in, in the auth specification provide to modify like uh, uh, the scope so like in there you change the like uh, provided consent and then uh, whatever you need to share with the that third party application uh, will be shared with the application and uh, from the uh, answer side then you can again and go and modify those things and like uh, so it's like a uh, pretty interesting area in the uh, answer side so uh, uh, actually like uh, you can uh, i think like uh, it will be uh, like uh, it, will, it will it is a short answer but like uh, there are many documentation available on the area mm -hmm. the, yeah. Uh, basically, we, we can go through them. And, so maybe we can share that. Too. Okay. There's a little bit of a long question here, Tanoja. Do you want to take that on? It's uh, something related to Active Directory. Um, does Active Directory can actively integrate an API? Is there was an option for Active Directory? So, like, uh, uh, does the active directory can be integrated using an API? And there was the option for the active directory. Okay, but the, like uh, uh, out of the box, uh, it only support like uh, uh, directly connecting. Uh, I think like uh, we can uh, answer the rest of the question later. 
Yeah. Let's have a question. Then. Okay, cool. Uh, we do have a few more questions as well, but what we will do is uh, when we are sharing the recording um, with you, we will uh, take on these questions and we'll answer those as well. Um, yeah, and I think we're good to go. Thank you so much for joining today. Yeah, so like, uh, yeah. Uh, so the, like uh, thank you everyone for joining the webinar so uh, you will see a question on the screen after the webinar so and we appreciate if you take the second to answer that uh, to understand your requirements better thank you thank you